my lovelies my name is Jane and welcome back to my YouTube channel now this is a follow-up from the last one I did about going through the UK criminal justice system so I've just filmed that hence I've still got the same makeup and clothes on but I have dried my hair and I'm going to straighten it so I thought well I might as well talk to you while I straighten it you know and tell you how I kind of felt about after they'd gone to prison and everything like that so okay so so if you haven't seen the last one, I will link it either in the eye or down in the description box down below. So go check that one out first. Otherwise, you're probably not going to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing all that wrong already. So, <laughs> so yeah, so we got to where they'd gone to prison and how you know on that day that I got home I completely fell apart and I was just let's say heartbroken absolutely heartbroken devastated in shock it was just all of those things so this all happened on the Friday so on the Saturday it was just Oh, I didn't want to do anything. I was lethargic. I was in tears. I couldn't stop crying, you know, because it, it, like I said in the last one, it doesn't just affect the person that's gone to prison. It affects everybody around them that's close to them. And, you know, I was just in tears all the time. It was just horrible, you know, and I just wanted to hear her just to tell me she was okay that's all i want to know is if she okay just going to go in with my keratin heat spray not much left in this one but i have got a new one i've just changed the packaging and you know that's all i can think about is what she's doing how is she feeling you know and mainly is she okay you know that that was the um the main one it's like is she okay you know, because of her mental health and everything else, I was just worried sick. Worried sick. So, on the Saturday, I phoned work and I said, look, I'm a mess. I said, I'm a complete, I'm a complete mess. I said, I can't stop crying. I said, you know, and that. And I sort of said, look, I just need a couple of days off just to, just to kind of get used to the idea and hopefully, you know, be okay. So, She'd been expecting the call, bless her. <laughs> and, you know, I sort of said, yeah, you know, I'll go back, I'll come back in Tuesday, no problem. You know, I would have had time to readjust to everything, get my head round it and that, you know, I'll, I'll, hopefully, you know, I'll be feeling a lot better about everything. So Tuesday came round, you know, before that, <laughs> um, Let's say Sunday is pretty much the same, tears all day, you know, just praying for a phone call, just to hear that they're okay, and, you know, still hadn't heard anything, which just made everything worse. Same again the Monday. On the Tuesday evening, I actually got a phone call, and I'm like, oh my God. Now, they hadn't sorted out her phone credit or anything like that because she hadn't been there very long. But they had allowed her, apparently she nagged the living bejesus out of them. <laughs> they had allowed her a five minute phone call to me, you know, just to sort of say that she's OK and, you know, what I need to do. Because in the prison system, if you haven't got a prison number for that prisoner, you can't do anything. You can't write to them, nothing. So everything's got to be done through this number. So, you know, once I've sort of found out she's okay, it's like, give us your prison number. I need your prison number. At least I can write to you, you know, while you're not getting phone calls and things. And so I grabbed all that. And, you know, she sort of said that, she, you know, she'll need some money sent. So I said, that's fine. You know, now I've got your prison number. I can send you money so that you know you can get your canteen which is what they call their shopping in there is canteen so apparently you get your canteen sheet on a monday um you're only allowed 
don't matter how much you've got in your account there you know you could have sort of you know 200 pound in there you're only allowed to spend so much and that's got to go for everything but i'll, I'll get into that <laughs> it's crazy and um so you know she had to wait till the thursday because she went in friday night so of course you know she didn't have any of that you know but she did go in with money so that she could put money in, into her account and at least she had some sort of money to start her off with so it's case of yeah got all that sort all that out so i was very grateful that i'd heard from her it's like okay she she's all right you know so very tearful you know she said she'd been having sort of you know crying all the time and sort of breakdowns and that which you know i expected so it wasn't anything i didn't expect but um um so I'm using my viewfinder to straighten my hair. I've got a mirror there. I'm still using the viewfinder. Oh, well, never mind. It is what it is. So got up early, went to work the Tuesday. You know, I was still in a really bad way. You know, mentally just in a really, really bad way. But I went to work, you know, sucked it up. Thought I'll get to work, keep busy. You know, I'll just put it in my mind on the back burner. You think, you know, I'll just... Put to the side. I'm very much of you keep your home problems out of the workplace. I am I'm that person. It's the, whatever happens at home, you leave it at the door, you know. So, but um, obviously this was a big, big deal, a huge deal, and I couldn't keep it at the door, you know. So I went to work, and I was sort of, you know, then I did say to, you know, the assistant manager, and that what had happened because they they were in you know she was in the dark because i'd asked the manager not to tell anybody and that you know which she didn't so i'm very grateful for that but i trust her so you know but she needed to know what was going on because i needed sort of certain days off and stuff like that so you know she needed to know which is fine but then afterwards it's a case of okay this horrific awful event in my life has happened and you need to know you know just the basics so before i told her it was a case of i'm going to tell you something i said but you can't ask me any questions I said because i cannot answer them i said you know i said i'm not allowed to answer them you know because this person sort of said you know she wanted as few people to know as possible the details huh? <laughs> fair enough and, you know i understand that and you know so that 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 was said and you know they were shocked like the rest of us and you know got about got on done my work you know one of my other colleagues was in as well that morning i told her because again she's part of the management team and i feel that only the management team needed to know everybody else didn't need to know so you know i sort of again sort of said like you know something's really bad's happened don't ask me any questions because i won't be answering them but this is what's happened you know so they were both very supportive you know as was my manager and i was just a mess complete mess at work complete mess and it got to i don't know around lunchtime ish and that i'd been out on a break before that and i'd literally sat and I just in tears, just sat, sat on me break in tears, you know, 15 minute break. And I was sort of like, okay, got to go back into work, wrong bit. <laughs> and pull yourself together because you've got to go back to work. So sucked it up, pulled, pulled myself back together as best I could, went back into work. A little while later, you know, assistant manager came up to me and said, look, she said, you know, two o'clock, she said, go home. She said, you're here, but you're not here. She said, just go home. She said, you know, you, you're not in a very good good place at the moment. You just go home. So I said, look, you know, I will be phoning the doctors tomorrow. I said, you know, and I won't be coming back in. I will be getting a sick now. I said, I just need some time out. I said, because I'm finding it so hard. I feel myself tearing up now, you know, so. And it was just so hard. You have no idea, you know, unless you've sort of been through it. You, you just can't imagine how hard it really is being on the outside, literally being on the outside, you know, and and there's nothing you can do, nothing, you know, you, 
you've helped do everything that you could do you know on this side i'm gonna to have to be the queen of you know that seems to be my thing is you know <laughs> it drives me mad so it must drive you bonkers so you know message the husband coming home early because i think he was home before me anyway and that so got onto the doctors the next day you know got a sick note for a couple of weeks they put me on antidepressants because I, I, I really was a mess i just couldn't even function in life you know i'd taken it so badly so so badly and you know so i explained that to the doctor and, and they asked me if i needed counseling and i said well no i said you know they asked me what had brought, brought sort of you know this awful depression on so i i said to them you know about it and that and they were like okay you know we're gonna give you some antidepressants they're gonna make you feel worse for them make you feel better you know but you will feel better eventually you know so it's like i'll take anything is it, are you sleeping no so they gave me some sleeping tablets which i knew i probably wouldn't take because i'm not a fan <laughs> and um you know so but the thing is is i have my prescription sent to me they didn't too well i had to phone them up actually because was it the next day or the day after i gave it a couple of days so yeah because i thought well if it's going to the chemist it will take a couple of days to get there so i thought well i'm not going to rush into town you know and it's probably not going to be there anyway so you know a couple of days happened and then i thought well where have they sent it have they sent it to the pharmacy or have they sent it to be delivered and i thought i have no idea so i thought i'll phone the doctor's surgery you know so which i did do and i sort of said like you know i've got these prescriptions and that. i said but i have no idea you know whether they're they're to be picked up or whether they're being delivered she said oh yeah they're being delivered and they said yeah that's fine as long as they're now I said I don't really want to go running around town looking for something that isn't there you know because it's a good 20 minutes walk to town from where I live and it's like oh, I wasn't in the mood I did not want to go out I didn't want to see anybody and I thought I ain't running around town for some ain't now if it's there I literally run in grab run home you know and and that and so it's like okay downside with that though it took a week for my medication to get here you know and i was just feeling so bad and it took a week for the medication to get here and i'm like jesus christ you know it's ridiculous you know medication like this they should why didn't they just ask me where they want me to want to send it so that then i could get it in a time scale that suited me sorry <laughs> um but it, it is what it was and that so uh, you know a week later finally got the medication so of course that you know delayed me feeling better with the medication by a week so it's like it is what it is so then um got the medication started taking it oh they were not wrong when they sort of said it's going to make you feel worse for a couple of weeks what makes you feel better oh my god it was just an awful experience it really was it just magnified everything it it just really magnified how i felt you know i didn't want to do anything i didn't want to eat you know but i'd got to the point where all i wanted to do was sleep you know i was sleeping at night i wasn't taking the sleeping tablets <laughs> i'm not a, i she said i could take half or one so one night i thought oh, i'll take half see what it does it didn't do anything i thought oh, i'm done I'm just not a fan of sleeping tablets, you know, but I thought, oh, maybe I'll give it a go. And I thought, I'll try with half. You know, the husband said, why don't you take one? He's like, mm, no, I won't bother. <laughs> but I think where your brain switches off, with me, when things are really traumatic, my brain will switch off and I will just want to sleep. So sleeping then wasn't an issue. So it's like, well, I'm not blooming taking them when I don't really need them. You know, I was falling asleep in the afternoon. I was curling up on my chair in the afternoon, falling asleep. It's like, whatever i don't care you know i really don't care i didn't i didn't want to do anything even basics like showering hair washing dishes tidying up was the biggest chore it's like i just don't want to and some days i'd literally get up just do what i had to do and that was it but i did find out that i could email prisoners and i thought oh 
great you know so set it all up you do have to pay for that service it's called emates so if you've got anybody at the moment you know and you don't know about this so i really ought to use my mirror for that <laughs> um so that you can email a prisoner the details that you need is obviously prison number where they are and you do have to put money on it to send to prisoners but you can also pay an extra i think it's 29 pence to receive a reply which is you know which is great so you know set all that up emailed her and that and then i got into the habit of literally i emailed her every day every single day you know so that she had something because she still hadn't been managed to sort out her phone credit or anything like that so you know still couldn't speak to her so it's a case of okay at least i can can communicate tell her what's going on this end tell her how i'm doing because i knew she'd be so worried about me you know and so like i said i got into the habit then of just emailing every day you know so i've got i've got all the emails i've still got sort of the app on my phone i keep saying i'm going to print all the emails off so i've got them but i just i haven't got around to it you know so but i will you know they'll stay there you know, they're not they're not hurting anything they'll stay there you know i've still got them and yeah so you know so that she could email me i think she only sent me one physical letter you know because you know um the emailing was just easier so i'm like, just trying to get under those bits so yeah so i'd literally sort of do what i had to do in the morning get myself sorted housework get dinner ready and then i'd sit down with a cup of coffee and i'd email her and like i said you know and this went on the whole time she was in there finally i can't remember after how long you know um started getting regular phone calls and to begin with the phone calls were just heartbreaking you know i'm scared i'm stressed i can't stop crying and i want to come home i want to see my family i want to see everybody i'm you know it was just heartbreaking so of course every time the phone rang it was like oh, you know i hope today's a better day for her i really do you know some days were some days weren't you know it's um yeah it, it, those those phone calls were just so hard especially when she's like i want to come home can you could just come and get me and it's like no i can't you know i said but i can come and visit i'll sort that out so it's a case of me feeling really depressed and heartbroken and that and then of course getting these phone calls from her of how that she's not doing well and how that there wasn't you know a wing for people with mental health issues and that she, even though she was seeing the mental health team she didn't think that they were taking her seriously and listening to her so that was a bit of a bane of contention with her and with me you know so um it, it got so bad at one point where i, I found the prison as I, I was worried to death so I phoned the president and I sort of said, no, you know, this is what's happening. You know, she feels that she's not being taken seriously. She's having a mental breakdown and everything else. She just cries all the time. She what they'd what they'd said to her, right, is when she was like having a nervous breakdown was to lay in her bed and breathe. Really? That was it. It's like, are you having a laugh? They did up her medication because she was on medication for anxiety. She got severe anxiety and that before she went in. But they did up her medication, you know. But obviously, like anything, it takes its time to actually do anything. So they'd upped her medication, but that's about all they'd done. You know, that's why in the end I just intervened. You know, I just phoned them up and said, look, you know, this isn't on. You know, she's in such a state and nobody's listening to her. And this is what the mental health team is all about you know and they're just not doing what they're supposed to be doing basically so apparently that did help you know when i got another phone call she sort of said you know that 
it did help because somebody literally after I spoke to somebody they went to see her straight away which is a good thing it's a case of well at least they took me seriously no, so at, least they me, yeah, at least somebody takes me seriously <laughs> so that was so that was one good thing you know and you know she did sort of start to settle down after a while she'd made a few friends in there she wouldn't go out to eat or anything she because she was induction wing it meant that she had her own cell at that point and she had like a toilet and a shower and a sink so at least, you know, she didn't have to worry about anything like that because she had all that anyway. So that wasn't a um, an issue, So which was great. So, you know, she would literally shut herself away. To begin with, she wouldn't go out for meals. She wouldn't go mix with anybody because she was terrified, absolutely terrified of the other people. You know, we don't know what they've done. You know, I do know bits now. But, you know, at that point, she didn't know anybody. She didn't know what anybody had done, you know, why they were there. So, you know, so that so she wasn't even mixing with the people. Well, she did get friendly with an older lady that sort of said, OK, come on, you know, I'll take you out. You know, you can come be with me and that, which was wonderful. Um, took her under her wing. So, you know, she said she, she was like a mother figure while she, you know, while she was there. And so, you know, she slowly started to mix with people. Which was good because I think she needed to. Yes, she was only in there for six weeks, but you still need, you can't just keep yourself to yourself for six weeks. You go, you know, just absolutely stir crazy for the want of a better word. And, you know, so bit by bit she got to know people. But the downside of that was that after you've been on duction wing for one to two weeks, you get moved then to general population. So as soon as she was kind of, you know, in a comfortable place with some other people on her, it's called a spur, they'd be moved. So, you know, then new people would come in and stuff like that. So, you know, it was like constant. And, you know, and I think that knocked her confidence a lot, you know, when, when this lady went. And... You know, but she was still mixing a bit and that, you know, I know um, apparently there were some um, Asian girls there and I think they'd done a, like a beauty afternoon and, you know, sort of, um, oh, I think it was eyebrows and things like that and they were sort of plaiting hair and, you know, just bits like that, you know, and she said, you know, that that was probably one of the best afternoons that she'd had while she was there, which was fantastic. You know, she said that she'd had a laugh with these girls, but she also said, um, this is one thing that I pointed out on this phone call. But yes, the wardens would have seen her laughing, mocking about this, that and the other. But that was a front. You know, I think a lot of you can relate to putting on a front. You know, and like she said, that was a front. That's what wasn't how she was feeling or anything like that. That was a complete front. So she she felt like she wasn't being taken seriously by mental health because of that. So, you know, that was another thing that I pointed out on this phone call. It's okay. So, well, yes, you know, she's putting on the front in front of other people, you know, trying to sort of, you know, mix in a bit and uh, do the best she can. Oh, knock that over. Just do the best she can, you know, in a really tough situation. You know, so, which is what any of us would do. God forbid, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to go to jail. You know, my age, I'm a, um, I've been a good girl all my life, you know, so <laughs> I won't ever experience it. You know, but this is the only way that I've experienced anything like this, you know, is through them. So, you know, so we did sort of clear all that up and that, but she still felt that the mental health team just wasn't brilliant and that you know so but she'd got friendly with this girl I think she was in the cell next to her and she you know they'd spend a lot of time in each other's cells and they got on really well and I think they were similar in age I'm, or be, I can't remember a bit younger or something so after I think it was about a week and a half ish week and a half yeah it must have been um the one of the wardens uh, guards wardens guards whatever they're called officers came along and sort of said you know that um 
needed to move her out of single cell into a double and would she like to share with this other person because they get on so well so they were like yeah fantastic so she was moved she was still on the same induction wing she was still on the induction wing the only reason she was still on the induction wing is because there was no space anywhere else for her in the prison you know which is quite scary when you think about it you know that it's so busy that you can't even move anybody from the induction wing you know so if you wonder what i was using i was using the um ghd duet styler i was meant to have said at the beginning but i completely forgot <laughs> so yeah so that's why she ended up on the induction wing a lot longer than she should have been you know and then i think it was about two and a half weeks later i get a phone call i was walking down the beach actually with my sister at the time sort of saying oh my god i've just been told that i'm moving over into general population into the is it red wing or something like that i can't remember the name of it now and she said like that's the worst in the whole of the prison system and you got all the murderers the rapists the, you know and everything else and she was freaking out absolutely freaking out just going to go in with some olaplex oil so she said you know i'm just about to have lunch now and then you know while i'm locked in at lunchtime i've got to pack up all my bags and be moved over but the good thing about it, there is a good thing about it, is the girl she was sharing the cell with was going over with her and she was going to be keep sharing the cell with this same girl. So that was a blessing in disguise. So at least she wasn't going on her own or anything like that because obviously with the other girl she'd got friendly with that had moved on, she, she didn't know where they'd gone to. So she couldn't guarantee that she was going to end up anywhere with you know, the people she already knew. But like I said, you know, she got lucky, she got moved over with her cellmate, which, you know, made the transition easier. But she was petrified. Like she said, you know, it, being on duction wings, one thing, you know, because it's small and that. But being on a general population is something else, you know, especially when it's classed as the worst wing that there is there. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this one. Like I said, if you haven't seen the first one, go check it out you know it will give a bit of a backstory to how we got here so thank you for watching my lovelies and i will see you all in the next one